it is officially Judgment Day for Lori Vallow Daybell and uh, some interesting developments leading up to today. There was some discussion, some disagreement about uh, Tammy uh, Daybell's aunt, Vicki Hoban, getting the right to address the court during the sentencing of Lori Vallow. Uh, Lori Vallow, of course, uh, infamous one from the gruesome charges that were levied against her of uh, killing her children, uh, awaiting her Judgment Day uh, in the courtroom in Fremont County, Idaho, later today. Or if you're listening to this later in the day, maybe it already happened. Uh, but uh, the somber aura of the courtroom, a very stark contrast to the tumultuous saga that transpired. If you want the quick cliff notes, Lori's 50 years old now. She was convicted May 12th of the horrific deeds that transpired back, transpired back in 2019. Uh, the uh, innocent lives of her children, Joshua J.J. Vallow, who is seven, and Tylee Ryan, 16, were snuffed out in their youth. Additionally, the looming charge of conspiracy to commit murder uh, of her husband, uh, uh, murder of her husband, Chad Daybell's former wife, Tammy Daybell, added to the uh, ominous hue of the already grisly tale. Uh, stepping into the storm of the tragedy, Vicki Hoban, which is uh, Tammy's aunt, uh, she had sought to represent her late niece at the sentencing. Initially, Judge Stephen Boyce rejected the request. However, following the demise of Tom, uh, Tammy's mother in June, Hoban was granted special permission to deliver a victim impact statement. They had a uh, Zoom conference the other day uh, with this, and we believe we posted the audio of it uh, as well. Did you get a chance to uh, to look at that at all, or or did you see the video of it up on, on YouTube of the hearing? I I didn't have a chance to take a look at it. I can only imagine what we would see there. I, I just... It's a it, Zoom. This whole, it's messed up. Yeah. It's like uh, Hollywood. Thing. It's like Hollywood squares. <laughs> yeah. And there's all of them on there. And Lori's sitting there like she's the next contestant and all set to buzz in. Uh, and she she just looks, I don't know, it, Lori's staying true to Lori of being, I think, completely oblivious to what's going on around her or what reality truly means. I think she's still very much thinking, well, you know, I'm just doing I'm being persecuted. This is my plight in life. And I think she still believes that everything she did was was the right move. That's what I get out of uh, seeing uh, her in that video. Worth well, watching. I just, what I don't understand is at any point, has she taken responsibility for what she's done and sat back and gone, you know, maybe what I did was not OK. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not feeling that from her at all. No. No, I uh, I don't think that she's capable of doing that. And I think when you look at this, that would be quite a leap for anyone uh, to come back from and say, that was wrong of me. I should not have done that. Because the gravity of which her crimes are and what she committed and the longevity of what she's accused of doing and has been convicted of doing, it goes far back, even beyond her kids. We're talking about spouses. We're probably talking about spouses that haven't even been brought into the conversation yet uh, in terms of any sort of charges being filed for their deaths, which I'm sure we'll soon see. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it's it's judgment day for her. It's going to be interesting to see what uh, the sentencing is. I think we can all assume it's going to be life in prison without the possibility of parole. But even when she's done with this, she's going to be extradited back to Arizona for another murder charge. Uh, oh, I and, forgot about that one, Tony. And and face the charges there. So we're far from being done with the charges against Lori Vallow Daybell. Chad Daybell, her husband, awaits his own day of reckoning. That start, uh, trial is set for April 1st of 2024. Sir, set your calendars, everybody. I think I might do a Daybell Easter eggs next year around that time. We'll have oh, little no. pictures of Chad and Lori on each one. And uh, you can crack the eggs. And I'm just already planning ahead. You know, April. That's uh, Easter's around April, right? March, April. Why? Yeah. Why is it taking so long to get that trial up and running? That's the judicial process of how things work forever. Why did it take them six months to ask her to produce her kids uh, or force her to produce kids, which she didn't produce because they were dead? There's a lot of things that move ridiculously slow uh, with our system. And this, uh, of course, happens to be one of them. It's going to be interesting, though, to see all the statements. We'll, uh, we'll of course, bring it to you here, uh, the audio of that. It, there's going to be a lot of people uh, reading and giving their uh, giving their thoughts. Uh, her oldest son, Colby Ryan, JJ's grandmother, Kay Woodcock, um, 
uh, Summer Shiflet, uh, there's a lot of people that are going to be giving statements in the courtroom today uh, in regards you, to Lori. Do you, Tony, do you feel like the family members are are thankful that they weren't chosen to be, you know, slaughtered by her and and Chad? I mean, do you do you feel do you get anything like that from them? Kind of thankful is the right word. Um relieved. Relieved that this is done, that I'm sure the chaos that was surrounding her while she was free was extremely unsettling, especially if you started to put the dots together and realized how many people were dying around her and how delusional yeah. she was getting with her thoughts and actions. Because, I mean, it, it really sounds like she was out of, you know, she just stopped communicating with anybody that didn't go along with it. When I talked to her brother, uh, Alex, uh, not that they're not Alex. Alex is the one that's dead. I'm sorry. When I talked to her other brother, um, who, uh, was in radio forever. And I, I can only think of his on air name and I'm not going to do that, but uh, he's been on the show before, uh, talking. I didn't at, realize he was on radio before. Yeah, he was in. Yeah. He's, uh, I'll, I'll spare it. Uh, but, uh, he was in radio. He still is in radio, I believe. I can, uh, I can share off the, he actually worked in Wichita with me at the same time. Adam Cox uh, is his name and uh, her uncle also speaking out uh, their podcast called Tylee and JJ Silver Linings. It's a 10 episode podcast where they basically try to go through and answer everybody's questions about the case uh, and, you know, put a book into it because they've been asked questions about this for years uh, and just try to, to spell it out uh, from their perspective of what they saw, what they went through and what they remember uh, of her. So it's very fascinating if you're into the case. Of course, we also talked with Adam on the show a couple weeks back and the, uh, the audio is there in our feed as well. So judgment day for Lori, get the popcorn ready and we'll be bringing you that coverage as soon as it comes down. You're locked into the hidden killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple podcasts and get an ad free experience. When you sign up to be a true crime today, premium plus member exclusively on Apple podcasts More of the hidden killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.